Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to our Sunday chat. This is Life, Love, and Liberty. Thank you all for coming in. Uh, if you're here, just say hi so that I know that you can hear me uh, and you can see me. So, uh, first of all, to all my Muslim friends, Selamat Hari Raya. Uh, it's, it's the end of Ramadan. And I, I know many of you, I've seen some pictures of you celebrating online with, with your family members all dressed up. And it's really, really sweet. So, uh, Selamat Hari Raya. Okay, everyone. So, today, it is the first time we are actually live on YouTube. I, I have no idea how to do this YouTube thing, but I'm so happy that we finally got it through. Uh, and do come and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Farmery, uh, Pharmacy Mastery with Sean Ang. Ah, Shirley is here. Hi, Shirley. Jocelyn's here. Oh my God, my mom is on the stream. Hi, mommy. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so, so Life, Love and Lipidemia is a chat show that I, I started about one and a half months ago. Uh, and this is a channel or, or a platform where I actually have conversations with people. I try to understand them. I try to learn from them. And I also try to pick up things that we as healthcare professionals can implement because one of the best ways to, uh, to become better at your job is really to learn not just from your own profession, but from another profession. And today with us, we have Jackie Lin. Uh, Jackie is a friend that I know, is a professional MC. Ah, and we, we taught many classes together in the schools. <laughs> and many, many chats. And, and yeah, the yeah. one thing that I appreciate a lot about Jackie uh, is his professionalism. There's always this commitment to becoming better at your job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. likewise, for you as well, you you have that profession, you have that work ethic, which I admire a lot as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's one of those things that that keeps us going, right? Yeah. So, uh, Jackie, welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So, everyone, our topic today, um, it's really about confidence, All right? Jackie is a professional MC. I've seen him on stage the way he commands the attention of the audience, quickly build rapport, and somehow stay, manage to stay so calm up on stage. It is something that I admire. And even though I've been teaching, I've been speaking, I've been training for a while, uh, I've always admired the way he carried himself on stage. Uh, there was once I, I saw a video, some of you might have seen it as well, uh, where Jackie Ash actually allowed an audience member to, to throw him on stage. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a, it's a, it's a, it was yeah. a junior show, was it? Yeah, don't try this at home. Eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a um, show. It was a judo so, show. Uh, so for that, that, that thing was actually, it was quite coincidental because I, I did have some judo training background and the audience member said that she could, uh, that she, her talent is in judo. So uh, I took the opportunity. Ah. Right, and well, it, it takes a lot of confidence to, to be that, <laughs> that kind, yeah. to, to, I mean, to actually play the role and to trust somebody uh, yeah. to, to take care of you. While at the same time, you as the MC, you, you have to take care of your guests as well. Mm, yes, yes. Ah, yep. Okay. All right. Um, so Jackie, let's, let's start uh, with, with something simple. Okay, How did sure. you get into this field of emceeing or, or being a, you know, a professional MC. I don't think there's a degree in, in emceeing, right? Not yet. Uh. Not yet. <laughs> I so don't how did your journey it, start for you? It's the, it's the kind of, uh, these sort of things are, these sort of things are like skills and it's something that we always enjoy. We, and that's, you know, sometimes we look at other people and then we see, wow, this job looks fun. I think uh, a lot of times when we are young, we look at, we hear stories of young boys or young girls looking at firefighters, looking at models or, or whatever, and they and they have the ambition to grow up to be something like that. And for myself, it, it didn't start when I was young, but it started when I was like in secondary school or in JC. 
and then I used to I used to see like uh, you know people hosting shows, whether it's on TV, whether it's in malls, whether it's at dinners, and I always I always thought, hey, this looks fun, and I had the sort of envy that this person could really this person could uh, entertain the crowd, could help to uh, help people enjoy themselves, make people laugh, and help everyone have a good time. So for me, I had that sort of, uh, I had that envy and I always wanted to try something like that. I thought I would enjoy it, uh, which was why I started to pursue it. And eventually, and now the, the downside is that I don't think I have a very uh, MC-like face, which is why whenever there were events being organized in school, I wasn't arrowed, I wasn't uh, volunteered to be the MC. Only until one event where I had to, uh, I had to volunteer myself because they were throwing the ball around. They'll say, no, no, you be MC, you be MC, no, I don't want And say, hey, can I try it? And then eventually, and then they say, okay, sure, why not? And after that, I, you know, I got my first uh, taste of the stage. I showed everyone a bit of what I can do on stage. After that, some of the uh, other people, they asked me to help out with their dinners. Uh, and that was, that was the hobby part of it. Only eventually after I left my previous job, I thought, hey, why not take this opportunity to try out something? that I've always been interested in, but never gotten around to pursuing, which is hosting. So I thought it would be, I didn't see it as a career because, I mean, a lot of the times we see, we don't see MC is like, wow, this one is a full-time job. No, it's not. Yeah, but after being a while in the industry, I got to know quite a number of people. I got to know quite a lot of, uh, I got to know more of the seniors and what the industry was like. I started to see that it's a viable full-time career and after that, I just decided to, okay, focus on this, take this seriously and see how I can do to grow this as a career. And that eventually brought me to where I am. And, and that's what makes Sean say all those nice things about me. <laughs> I'm really flattered, honestly. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's one thing to do it as a hobby, but it, when you take a hobby and you want to do it professionally, it's a different story, right? Because I, I remember yeah. that when I was a kid, uh, my, my love was actually squash. And I think a, a number of people who are watching you would know that. Yeah. I... But playing squash as a hobby and playing it professionally, it's, it's a whole new, it's a whole yeah. new ball game. What, what was that transition like for you? What was that, that transition? Uh, the first, uh, well, when I started to do it as uh, after I left my previous job, which was in insurance, I thought I, I wanted to try being an MC, but there was a uh, there I didn't really have any avenues to volunteer as an MC. You know, I wasn't connected to any of the RCs or any event organizations. So I found this I found this listing. I went online. I found this listing which was looking for uh, which was looking for MCs, but they weren't looking for experienced MC so just nice it was that period when I was start when I started looking I found that that's why my mom always calls uh, my mom calls me T Kong Kia like very lucky <laughs> so I I have luck on my side so from that I did a bit but the thing that and the thing that really helped me grow right was in telling the people around me so I have some friends like uh, some friends who are MCs in their own rights like so, some of you, uh, some of them in Toast, I met through Toastmasters like uh, Benjamin Liao, like uh, Ching Hong. So they were more experienced than me. And because and I shared with them my interests, I shared with them what I wanted to do. And I guess they felt my enthusiasm and they uh, shared some opportunities with me. And so I took those opportunities and I did it. But whenever I did those jobs, right, I always, I had the... I had the keen interest, I had the mindset of wanting to give my best for the performance, no matter what it, no matter what it is, whether it's a small show, whether it's a, uh, whether it's a large event. So, and I think having that, having that sort of, uh, so when they referred me, they got me, they received good feedback and they could see that, you know, this guy is, this guy does things seriously. So they had more incentive to refer me in the future. And... Being prof and going towards the professional part, I think it's really about the mindset. Transition happened back in my like 
uh, one year into the business, I started to think, okay, I want to make this a full-time career. So the mindset shifted from, okay, doing this whenever I have the opportunity to how should I build this so that I can have more opportunities in the future and where do I find these opportunities? And I think that is the uh, business mindset of things. Uh. Yeah. So I think, Sean, you should be able to relate to this as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember when I started in this business full time, it's it's a it's a totally different ballgame because it a lot of us join I mean you 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 become part of a business or you start a business because you have this impression of being a really good practitioner, you're a really good technician. But once you get into the business, you have to think about the financial side of things. So it's yeah. a different kind of worry. It's a different kind of uh, thought process. It's a different kind of mental strength and mental fortitude required to, yeah. to succeed. And especially your, your first time doing a professional event, it, well, it, it really makes you tremble sometimes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, <laughs> and, I, and I remember that uh, my first event, I really did not sleep that much because I was I kept thinking about it nonstop. Uh, <laughs> and, and I, I I just I just I just couldn't sleep. I was so worried. You know, what if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? Uh, do you yeah. remember your first professional gig? My first professional gig. Okay, there was the. <laughs> I think there was the. Uh, I, I will share a couple of experiences. The first experience was the first time I actually. The first time I actually took a job, I, I won't call it a pro. I mean, technically it is professional because I'm getting paid for it. But there is a. But I didn't have the prof. I didn't have the. Uh, what I call it the uh, professional mindset yet. So the first time I did, uh, I did a job. I there was that inertia, you know, to like because we are we are there we are there at the event. It was a road show, and then. I yeah, think I'm thinking like, okay, should I start? How should I start? Uh, when should I start? Okay, uh, what is the right time to start? And I think this is something, especially if you are if you are starting your own business or if you are starting a venture by yourself, I think you will be able to relate to as well. What is the right time to start, right? And we like to we like to give ourselves the idea, the mindset that when uh okay. Uh, when is the right time to start? I will go. When is the right time to start? I will go. And then, but there's never this right time to start. When's the when's the best time to start? Right now. Now is the best time to start. So the guy, the coordinator, who was there, he said, "Hey, you waiting for what? Go lah. Say lah. Say something." And that was the push, that was the actual push that got me to, you know, start the first line on the mic. Yeah. So, so that was the first experience that I had. But the other experience that I had the first proper dinner I hosted, I like I was I was a filled with uncertainty as well, because that was a job referred to me by my friend Benjamin, and it was a job for you know one of the one of the camps they were closing down their they were closing down their mess, and they were and they were throwing a party they were having a dinner for everyone to celebrate. So for that one, that was the first proper dinner I did. And even before, that, when he got me the job, when Benjamin got me the job, I was thinking, I was asking him, hey, you sure I can do this or not? No, because I never do this kind of thing before. What if, what if I'm not good enough? Yeah. And that is really the mindset we have. What if I'm not good enough? Then I think they, what, I am not worth what they are paying for. And because of that, we are worried. Uh, we are afraid to take money. And then my friend Benjamin, right? He threw me this line, which is uh, he threw me this line, which really I will remember it. And I always say it to my friends who are asking for advice. And that is, you tell you tell me that, but uh, yeah, uh, the line, right? Because I asked him, hey, you sure I can do this or not? And he told me, right, you say that again next time, I'm not give, gonna give you any more jobs. And that is the line I really remember. Because I think a lot of us, if we are starting out on our own venture, right, or we, we are starting out on gigs, whether it's uh, performances, whether we're putting out a product, 
I think there is something to remember, and this is something I heard from other people as well. Your first time is going to suck. Yeah. The thing you need to do about your first time is to get it over. Is to do it, do it, do it to the best of your ability and then get past it. <laughs> yeah, so when you get past it, so when you get past it, you have your first time done. And because it's your first time is over already. Right? And the next few times there will be less inertia holding you back. So I think this is something that I really, it's a, a piece of a value that I really took away from it. Uh. Yeah. And, and, and as they say, if your first time sucks, the next time it can only get better. The most important thing is you dare to put yourself out there. Because yeah. opportunity doesn't always come. I think uh, yeah. if, if we are very honest with ourselves, part of success uh, you require a bit of luck, you need opportunity, uh, yeah, yeah. and you have to grasp it. There's this saying that uh, that success is when opportunity meets, uh, preparation meets opportunity, right? And mm -hmm. when, just nice when you, have the, when you have the right skills and at the right time, and that's when, uh, that's when you apply, you, take, you grab the chance. Yeah, I think success meets opportunity, and then the third part, the most important thing, thing is to take action. Yeah, because when you have success, when you have the rep preparation, when you meet the opportunity, but you don't take, you hesitate, you don't take action, maybe the opportunity flies flies by just like that. You know? And you I never know when uh, the opportunity will come again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. opportunity is it can be just like, uh, just in that moment, which is like earlier you mentioned about that, uh, me getting thrown by one of the audience members, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a preparation although it's not prepared for the intent just nice i have that skill set and just nice the my friend come my friend gets my friend comes along and you know say that you know i can i know judo that's the preparation meets opportunity yeah, yeah and and it's we always have to be ready for it uh, yeah. when, when the opportunity comes all right if you're yeah. just joining us on the stream welcome welcome hello uh, hello uh tony's here Jimmy's here Jirin. Jirin. Hi, Jirin. Yes. Jirin. Jirin. Hello. For the rest you of you who are here, drop a message. Uh, let us know you're here. Uh, just say hi. And today is uh, other than yeah. Facebook. Uh, it's the first time that we are live on YouTube. Yeah. You have any viewers from YouTube? No? <laughs> I, I have no idea. How do I see it? <laughs> you know, like you think the first time, right? Just get through it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the first time is going to suck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh man, I'm hoping for something slightly better than that. We're we are one and a half months in now. Okay, Jackie. Yes. Well, um, let's talk a little bit about your work and yes. your ability as an MC to gain the cooperation of your audience. Yep. All right. There are a lot of steps to that. Uh, yeah. One of the things that as an MC, you have very little time on stage to share yeah. your thoughts, share your idea, which means you have to say yeah. it with a lot of clarity. You have to say it with a lot of brevity. Mm. It's very similar to us in healthcare, right? Because when, when we speak to a patient, you don't have all day to talk to a patient. You have to yeah. be precise. True. But if you just True. tell them exactly what you want to tell them, then there's no rapport, there's no relationship, then yeah. you know, just like a, a robot. It's very transactional, isn't it? It's very, very transactional. And I think that's one yeah. of the issues that we have in, yeah. in healthcare. Uh, what's it like for you? How do you gain that kind of clarity? Okay, I think for, my, for myself, right? Uh, I want to add on to what you say, because uh, to, help, to help paint the picture, to help give context for everyone to understand is that the when 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 we, when we step on stage right we have a very short time maybe even five minutes or even just one minute to really get their attention and get them to think oh this guy knows what he's talking about because you realize that <laughs> you realize that uh yeah you realize that a lot, some some people don't want to be there i know if you have been to a D, &D before some a dinner and dance maybe your company dinner you know some of your friends they just go there they are just looking for three things. Okay, the first thing is the food. Second thing is the alcohol. And third thing is the third thing is the lucky draw. And that's it. Yeah, all the games and whatever, they are not interested. <clears throat> so we have to we have to be 
clear, we have to be concise, we have to be able to grab their attention in that short, very, very short time. So, <clears throat> and one thing like Sean said is really about being clear on what we are doing, being clear on what we are doing and <clears throat> being clear, having that clarity, you know, having that uh, clarity, I think that one part of it is inside, the, is in our, <clears throat> is inside our mind. Because if you are guided, if you are directed, you know what you're doing, right? Then you will be a lot more focused on what you're trying to achieve. So that is so that is what we are. So that is something. That's one thing. Okay, if you know what you're doing, and then the second thing that we I believe that we have to do is to know what we are talking about. So when, <clears throat> so when I am in a, so let's say I just give an example. So <clears throat> when I go to, on the stage, whenever things happen, whenever I step on the stage. I have the very focused mindset. I have the very <clears throat> uh, clear purpose that I'm there to entertain my audience. I'm there to uh, facilitate the program and entertain my audience. So because I have that thing guiding me, I have that thing guiding me. I have that uh, it's sort of like a destination I set on my GPS. So whatever direction I take, right, I will be heading towards that. I will be uh, trying to go closer towards that goal. So when we have that uh, clarity of purpose, right? We will be able. I believe. I believe that I will be able to. You know, whatever action I take, it will be bringing myself, bring everyone closer towards that goal. Yep. <clears throat> so the uh, the other thing I think that uh, that really helps us in uh, in being clear, in knowing what we're knowing what we're doing is really. To know what we are talking about, knowing what we're doing. Uh, it sounds like I see that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What What do I mean by that? Okay. Because let's say, let's say, uh, let's say I go onto stage, right? And I don't. I go onto stage. I don't have any idea of what the program is. I don't have any idea what's going to happen in the dinner. I don't have. I don't know whether there's going to be. Uh, I don't know whether there's going to be a lucky draw. I don't know whether there's going to be a prize presentation. I don't know whether there's going to be any games. I don't know whether uh, people are there to have fun or people are there to learn. Right? If I'm do if I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing there. Right? I will not know. I will not know what I should be doing. Okay, that sounds a bit convoluted. <laughs> convoluted. Okay. Uh, let me just. Yeah. So, okay. so, so what you are what you are saying essentially is, in gaining clarity, yep. you you first have to understand your purpose of doing the job that you do. So it's not yes, it's right. not like just showing up yep. and doing what people tell me, but there is like a yeah. there's a real purpose to it. Yep. Right. And for yourself, your would you say your purpose is to entertain? Okay. For myself, <clears throat> that uh, that is my. I would agree that is correct. Because as an MC, one of the things that I really uh, folk, I brand myself a lot as is an entertainer. I enjoy making people laugh. I mean, this uh, whenever I'm in a, at a dinner, I enjoy helping people enjoy themselves. So entertain. But then, of course, the other purpose is dependent on the uh, dependent on what what the program, what the event is about, isn't it? So it can be uh, it can be a you no. Know, if it's a very formal event, like a citizenship ceremony at one of the at the community centers, right? Mm -hmm. I can. The main purpose is not to entertain there. The main purpose is to facilitate the proceedings and make sure things go smoothly. Yeah. So that is the. So with that in mind. So with that in mind, the purpose it can depend. It can differ from situation to situation, and the uh. It can differ, differ from situation to situation, but then again, there's also that uh, purpose that we want to achieve for ourselves, right? So there's a situational purpose, and then there's, there's the uh, personal purpose, what we want to do for the event itself. Yeah. And, so, and, and the ability to understand that purpose mm -hmm. uh, keeps your mindset in the right direction. Mm, and, yeah. And it, and it guides the way that you present yourself? Yes, that's right. Okay. Yep. 
Well, so so if that is one purpose, which means that's the internal game, right? Understanding mm. in your mind what's your true yeah. purpose for doing the yeah. role that you are doing as an mm. MC. Right? It, when right. we talk about establishing trust, rapport, looking professional, mm. there is this bit that you mentioned earlier, and that is about preparation. Preparation, yeah. yeah. How do you prepare for an event as a professional MC? How do I prepare for an event? Okay, uh, since we're, one of, I guess since the main the main uh, theme that we're talking about is how to establish the uh, connections with our uh, connections with our uh, audience or whether it's our uh, participants, I think in the healthcare industry, you call this uh, is it the patients or the what is it? uh whoever you're talking to. Uh. So the preparation we have to uh, we have to do preparation with that in mind. So, for example, when I prepare for the when I prepare for an event, I often have a meeting with the client, and some of the things that I will ask the client is, what are the demographics of your what are the demographics of your people, right? Well, how uh, what's the age range? What's the uh, what's the race distribution? What's the uh, what are the cultural what are the cultural things that they enjoy? So for example, I attend. For example, I hosted this dinner and dance for an insurance uh, agency, and they and their people there, they really enjoy. Their people there, they really enjoy the uh, Thai disco culture, <laughs> yeah. And because I knew that, right, I was able to I was able to structure the themes of the uh, the themes of the program around that. And then whether it's the jokes that I use, whether it's the lingo that I use. If I am, if I know what, if I know the culture, their culture, if I understand their demographics, I am able to speak their lingo and connect better with them. So that is the kind of homework that I have to do. I have to understand what kind of audience I have, right? Or another is another example, another situation. For example, I had this friend. Okay, this is not a personal experience, but I, I think it's very relevant. I have this friend who hosted for a hosted for a, a dinner for a faculty in NUS. Yeah. And a lot of those are prof professors, academics. And the because they are academics, I think eventually he went along with a lot of uh he went along with materials that were you know relevant to relevant to the kinds of things that they study. So the kinds of things that they study and more the material that he was used was more intellectual, which uh, from what he said, I believe that I believe the crowd appreciated that and could resonate with that. So the preparation that we can do is finding out about our audience, right? And then, uh, yeah, finding out about our audience and of course, finding out more about what we are supposed to do there. Like the no, I, I think when you talk about finding out about your audience, um, yeah. it is important for us as well in healthcare to yeah. to think about how we can implement that because as as Practitioners, when a patient comes to us, yeah. sometimes you, you do consider what they're like. But when you have 100 plus people coming to you every day, mm -hmm. you tend to lose sight of that. You know, Who is this person actually in front of me? What are they like? What are their interests? And with mm -hmm. the different kind of patient, different kind of audience in front of you, the way you communicate your idea can be pretty yeah. different as well. Yeah. <laughs> But, yes, really. Yeah, so, really. So one of the things you so one what you mentioned earlier was to have to understand your demographics well, uh, for yep. you to be able to do a really good job and to understand them and speak their language. That's how we build yeah. trust, right? Yep. The, the other part that you mentioned is technical preparation. Technical preparation. Uh, what, yeah. Yeah. What What is technical preparation like for you as a professional MC? Because for us, it's it's medication knowledge, it yeah. is <laughs> your your counseling skills. Uh, mm. What's the technical knowledge like for you as a professional MC? Technical knowledge. Well, this is uh, talking about the kind of skills that we, the kind of skills that we have, right? Mm. Yeah. The kind of like, uh, it's like your medical knowledge, the, the knowledge of medicines. And for us, okay, <clears throat> for us, let's uh, see how I can arrange this. I think first thing is uh, knowing how to, first thing is, uh, there is a lot of things that actually come from experience from what we do what works what worked in the past and 
what we can and how we can apply that in the future. But the other the other part of technical knowledge is also come from uh, comes from the preparation work that we do. Like, uh, okay, one thing that I do a lot as an MC because I'm an entertainer, I want to engage. I want to make sure that people are engaged, people are involved. Is I play I play games with the audience, right? I play games with the audience. So uh, when it talk, when you talk about technical knowledge, there I think different from what you have is because you have uh you guys probably have a course a program in university you study pharmacy, and for us there's no like you mentioned at the start of the interview there was no uh there's no degree, <laughs> there's no uh there's no field school of study so ways that we can find out learn more is about this ways that we can learn more one way that i really learned a lot is through uh through others in the industry whether it's uh through seniors or whether it's through peers so i find out from them the kind of games that they play and then i try to i try to learn from them sometimes you know at the start i just like take hold and say okay uh ting hong your idea i borrow it and then i take it i go and play i try it i work up and then see whether it works or not and then more importantly is that we have to constantly review, constantly take that skill, take what we did, we bring back home, and then we see, we tell, ask ourselves what worked, what didn't work. And from that, we are able, then we refine those skills. Yeah. So instead of just learning, instead of just learning from a book, right, we have to learn from our own experiences. And from the experience, we are able to build a better set of skills, right? Ah, yeah. and and it 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 reminds me of my work in the past, uh, where mm. in in one of the episodes, which is episode four of this, where I, okay. I did a sharing of myself, uh, um, and some of my thoughts at work. So one of the things that I had to consistently ask myself in terms of preparation is. I had to be very honest with myself sometimes and, and mm. ask myself, did I really have a good day? Was that interaction with the patient a good interaction or a not so good interaction? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. as as on the train back, and then I would I would sit down, I would lie back, I would think, and I would ask myself, how can I actually prepare better for the next situation where, where this actually happens? Mm. You know, because yeah. I think a lot of times when people say you learn <clears throat> the lessons of your mistakes. Yeah. You, you learn your lesson, but the next time it comes, you, you're not that much more prepared. Yeah. And I think that the ability to perform well in the second instance comes from your preparation before it even happens. Yes, yeah. And it's, it's true. Okay, but uh, of course you talk about that, right? I think that it's a very natural response, a very human response in a lot of us that when we encounter something unpleasant, right? When we encounter something unpleasant, we want to try to we try to uh, <coughs> we don't want to face it. Want to okay, uh, it's in the past. Okay, don't want to deal with it anymore, and uh, let's just go on to the next happy thing. It's a very very human response, and what like whenever we do, <coughs> like in school, right? We we get poor marks for an essay. We get poor marks for a test. Right, our very natural response is okay. The test is over already. Forget it. Don't think about it. Yeah, but when but we should think about it. And when we think about it, we real we it's like the corrections done in the test. It's not to see where we went wrong and then where we can learn from and where we can improve upon for the future. Yeah. So I think this is something that we have to make a mental note for ourselves and help us help us get uh. You know, tell ourselves every time we encounter something unpleasant. Because like the cliche saying, uh, 失败乃成功之母, or in English, success, uh, what? failure is the success, of, is the mother of success. Uh. What's the English saying? Uh? Yeah, something like that. Something I can't remember, remember the exact <laughs> <words. laughs> Yeah. But you, yeah. You, you have to go through challenging times to, to be able to to eventually succeed and you have yeah, to learn yeah. from those challenging times not just go through it yeah. but you got to learn a lesson from it yes and not just learn the lesson from it you got to prepare and then yeah. you have to implement the next time it actually happens if not you, yeah. you haven't really improved much because you're just you're just not that much more prepared yeah so so when we talk about um clarity right so it, it mm. seems that right now 
clarity for you is in terms of understanding your purpose, is in terms of uh, your preparation. And there's so much yeah. preparation uh, before an actual <laughs> event or a professional encounter. And I think that's a yeah. lot. It's a lot of that stuff that people don't see. In, in the number yeah, of yeah. times you rehearse a story, the number right. of times you yeah. rehearse an, an opening sequence, the number of times you really? rehearse the instructions <laughs> just to take someone through an activity. <laughs> Yeah. And and you know the the fact that you're willing to go through all of that and you bother to go through all of that that makes you a real professional. Uh, <laughs> <thank> you. <laughs> okay. The the next thing I want to talk about is is this right earlier you yeah. mentioned that when you go for a D and D there are people who don't want to be there. Yeah, okay, they're either there for the only the food, they are only there yes. for the beer, or they yeah. are there uh, because of the lucky draw. Yes, right? yes, you actually missed out one thing. Yep. Yeah, you actually missed out one thing. There's one more reason why they are there. Why? Why? Because the company forced them to be there. If not, they got to take annual leave. <laughs> Speaking from experience, right? You <laughs> Speaking from experience. So, it, I was that kind of person. Mm, I've okay. never enjoyed yeah. D&Ds. And it's quite weird to say that considering I, I you know was, why? I was you the know chairperson why? of what? You know why? Because you don't, you didn't hire me. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. Now I know. Yeah. No, but I, I remember the. Uh, it's quite weird that I would say that because I, I was the chairperson of my one of my previous company's twentieth anniversary uh, dinner at Hans. Fiftieth. Wow. Yeah, and we 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 had a great job. We had a we had a great event. Everybody enjoyed it, and that happened to also be the first time, uh, in a long time that. The company actually decided to hire a professional MC, and that mm. made all the difference. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and it's it's one of the things that I noticed mm. that he did very well, and not just him. Any professional yeah. MC does yeah. very well, especially if they come with some experience. Is yep. they are able to make people like me feel comfortable really, really quickly. Oh yeah. True. Yeah, and, and that's that's not easy to do because I'm I'm a difficult audience. So, <laughs> as as a professional, what, what are some, some tips or some things that you employ to to handle people like me who don't want to be there? You're gonna lose my attention really fast at the start of an interview. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I think uh firstly before before we start on that. I want to give a shout out to Ting Hong who is being very active in the comments. Thank you for your support. Yep. Uh, he's one of my great friends, one of the guys who one of the guys who helped me a lot when I just started out. Now I'm a lot better than him. So if you want to hire an MC, don't look for him. Look for me. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh <clears throat> one thing we really uh you, you talk about making the audience comfortable right <clears throat> the let's say let's say we start start out i think and uh this is very often you will see the and very often you will see this as a very clear difference when in the first impressions well whenever you're hiring a uh, professional or whether you're uh whether you're getting a volunteer to it do it not to say that all volunteers uh all volunteers uh, perform don't perform as well there are some who have a talent in that and really host very well. So you got to give it to them. But one thing that we focus a lot is as professionals, we do want to make our com audience comfortable. Because <clears throat> like Sean said, like, like you said, if you, are, if you are not, if your mindset, you really don't want to be there. If the person is making you feel uncomfortable, if the person is not making you feel comfortable, why would you want to be there? Right? So I guess a we do have some uh let's call it like mental tricks and or some procedures or some techniques that we use to help our audience feel comfortable. So the very first simple the very first thing that uh, I like to do uh, or in fact you see a lot of uh, MCs do is whenever they start within the first five to ten seconds they will ask for a small action from the audience already, right? Small action. So the small action can be. Very simple thing as, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming out today to uh, to Mr. and Mrs. Ang's 
uh, wedding, Sean's and Miss Chobu's wedding. Yeah. So today is today is a Saturday. I know a lot of you have a lot of things to do, but you are here, and for that, I would like to thank you. So can everyone please give yourselves a huge round of applause? You start by getting everyone to clap. Clapping is a very small action, and you, when you get them to follow that action, right, you are inadvertently asking them to uh, listen to you. So that is a sm so small subconscious signal that to get people to listen to you. That might be a small action, but it builds up. You know, yeah. You know, as if you ever done sales before, you want to get a person to say yes. You have to ask like leading questions, get them to say yes. So, uh, you, so in order to get the you want to get the trust of people very uh. It, from the start, maybe you can start by asking them to take some small actions. Another one is if you go to training, I think Sean is a Sean, you're a trainer. You will be able to uh <clears throat> you see often, right? When you go to training, maybe in the first few seconds. Okay, how many of you here have encountered this problem? Show of hands. Yeah. Okay, how many of you here didn't have this thought? Let's see, let's see. So same thing right over there. You are asking them to perform. Uh, listen to listen to a small action and perform that small action. So you're getting a bit of compliance there already. So that is the first thing, the small action, right? You get them to uh, get them to uh, perform a small action. Okay, then another thing that we do, right, is to break the ice. Break the ice. You want to make someone feel comfortable, you have to break the ice. Okay, breaking the ice can be two ways conversation when you talk to someone you have a conversation you feel that there is a exchange of uh, there is an exchange of information there is an exchange of ideas and more importantly there is an exchange of trust maybe just a little bit but that it is there right so like for example i am on the stage when i'm on so after i ask everyone to give themselves a huge uh, a round of applause and then i talk to the audience how do I talk to the audience instead of just making announcement? Okay, today we are here for the wedding of uh, Sean and uh, Sean and Miss Chobu, and then you know, we're going to do this. That is very that is very mechanical. It follows the flow of the program. We are not involving the audience. So how I involve the audience? I may so I, I pick out people in the audience to talk about talk to, right? I mean I don't talk. I may not talk to the audience as a whole because when I talk to an audience as a whole. The idea, the the thought is, oh, is he's not talking to me. He's talking to someone else. Let someone else respond, right? If I talk to someone, if I talk to someone specific, whether it's a person or whether it's a table, right? I will be able to get much better exchanges. So, for example, during that round of applause, there is a good chance that out of a room of maybe twenty or thirty tables, there is one table that is more rowdy than the others. Okay, and then usually among that route in that rowdy table, you will find some you will find a guy who is just over the top, like Wah, yeah, 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 what you all this. Yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> that guy is actually calling for your attention. <laughs> but but that guy you can tell immediately that he is more open. He is more uh, willing to have fun. He's out to have fun. And this is the guy. This is the kind of people that you want to uh, converse with. Okay, so uh, after the applauses, after the applause finish, and say, "Okay, that table over there, right? That guy, wow, I like you a lot. I like you a lot. Okay, so please continue to have fun like that. And later, I will ask you to come on stage to play some games. So you have some. So it's like you have in uh, personal interaction with them. Okay, right? personal interaction." And that it feels like you are talking to them, so that breaks the barrier between the stage and the audience. And then, oh, yeah. to give them personal attention means that we yeah. we have to be able to get them to comply to a small action, and after mm -hmm. that, you you break the ice by having small talk. And that's what you do at yeah, least. Small, yeah, yes, in your right. work as a as yeah. a professional MC. Yeah, and and all that actually happens in in the first in the first two minutes. minutes. First two minutes is done already. First two minutes. Yeah, first two oh. minutes. I get on stage. Okay, thank you everyone for coming here today. Clap your hands. Okay, you over there. Uh, you try to be funny, right? Later, I make you funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
no, I, I, I find that quite interesting because if, if in the first two minutes you have to break the ice, you have to, to get some form of, of involvement going, and it's yeah. the first two minutes in a three hour event. Yeah. For us in healthcare, we sometimes have five minutes with a patient, sometimes 10 minutes, yeah. sometimes less. So yeah. how I keep thinking how we can apply this because a lot of times, especially in the pharmacy side, you're mm. you're rushing to to get the medicines out. Get, yeah, and it, while you're doing that, of course, in a safe manner, right? We have we definitely yeah. have procedures. But mm. when you 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 look at the queue time and when it's going off the charts, mm. you get you get really, really yeah. scared. <laughs> and pressure, a lot right? of time, it, we yeah. we tend to get the job done. Yeah. Without thinking about how we can actually make the small talk uh, and build rapport. Because I mean, I've ever been told uh, mm. there's no time for that. There's no time for stories. There's no time for, for asking something else. Yeah. And, and my experience is slightly different because oh. I've, I found that if, let's say, I, a, a patient is, is, or a customer is coming up to me and they are asking about travel medicines. You yep. know, some people have motion sickness when they travel, right? So yes. it is easy to say, okay, this is the name of the tablet, all right? And you take it yep. half an hour before you travel and you might get a bit drowsy. But I realized yep. that the real relationship is built not in take it half an hour before travel, but really yep. in, oh, where are you going? Oh, yep. I've been there before. And <laughs> oh, it's, this is what it was like for me. I hope you enjoy yeah. it. Along the way on the plane ride, you might yep. feel a bit of, motion sickness if you, you, you tell me that you have this. So the this is what worked for some of my other patients. And and just with that extra line itself, mm -hmm. the relationship yep. is built. And the, really? I, I always felt that it, for us in the healthcare side, when you know that you have a good counseling session, and mm -hmm. you, not just because you're happy after that, but yeah. you know that it is it is at a different level when your counseling session feels like a conversation. Yes. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and that's that's why I've always found that it's it's what mm -hmm. a something think, that we can very quickly break the ice. Mm -hmm. I think one point that you, I think the point that you mentioned that is uh I think is very important is that you know sometimes you just don't have the time and it, it can be it I think for healthcare especially when there is a when there is a heavy heavy load it can be very, very true but like but these are some of these are small actions that you that you just take that you take right i guess uh i guess maybe a kind of small action that you take i'm drawing from my own experience right? i'm drawing from my own experience is to uh whenever i be, because i'm because i'm cheap i always go to the polyclinic uh. my time is cheap i don't i don't mind waiting so i go to the polyclinic whenever i collect my medicine they ask they always ask me uh you know they uh i always need to tell them my ic number right so that can be a that can be a small exchange that can be a small action by itself of course the rapport does not immediately come with the the does not immediately come with the exchange asking for the ic number but uh when you deliver that small action right that is there is a small form of compliance there and then so i if I if I recall maybe through my uh, own experiences, but sometimes sometimes I encounter a pharmacist at the counter, and there's that warm smile, and they ask they ask the they ask the question, oh how are you doing today, you know yeah, okay hope you're how are you doing today is a uh, uh, hope that you know you feel better after this. There is a small it's a a bit of small talk. I think that. Can that can be enough to bring on a sense of comfort, but then the, in the other sit, so these are some small actions that can be. Uh, Do you think they say that to you because uh you have very nice hair and very handsome? Oh and yes, of say. course, of course. Every time I pass by girls on the street, they try to say that to me, but I don't have time for them. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, more importantly, the more important part where you need to uh need to have better rapport is when you need the person to, when you need the person to you know connect with you because you are trying to help the person uh, when often when we visit pharmacy when we visit pharmacy we have the idea okay we are just here to get the med 
you're here to get the medicine and then that, that's the end of the interaction but like uh you mentioned earlier counseling i think in that in that situation it but would probably be a lot more uh imperative to build that comfort because in counseling session you need the person to open up to you right need need uh, more as much information as from the person as possible and at the same time you want the person to be receptive and that is when you want them to be comfortable right so some of that so in that situation like a uh, small action maybe like uh, in a good handshake in a handshake uh, you shake the person's hand ask the person to take a seat of course, in a pleasant manner, uh, physical touch is a very powerful. Uh, it's a very powerful social tool. A good handshake can convey a lot of confidence. When when the person is a uh, confident, when you, you when you sense a person is confident, you can you feel a lot more relaxed. You feel a lot more comfortable uh, listening to him because you feel that he he or she knows his or st her stuff. Yep, and I, I think it's it's yeah. very critical that that we do that, and we, you know, for for all of us who yeah. who are in this line of service, we really have yeah. to think of how we can still achieve what we want to achieve because there's there is a purpose to the conversation, mm. right? But for yeah. for us, uh, it is important that we make the client feel comfortable, or for us, is make the yeah. patient feel comfortable. I mean, yeah. for those of you who are in healthcare or or Who's, who are coaches? I mean, you you might have come across situations where because you have a good relationship or you have the trust of your yeah. client, they tend to share things that they they've never shared with anyone before. And you know, how do I know that? Because they tell me, I say, I never yeah. tell anyone before. But I want to tell you something. Uh. Yeah. You know, I actually have this condition, and I don't know if uh. this medicine is okay or not. Uh. Now, when someone says that. It is not just in my mind like, like oh, oh, someone trust me finally. But the real yeah. aim of that entire sequence is now I know something about yeah. you that could potentially save your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that all comes because you present yourself in a way that's very warm, very welcoming. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. in, in what you're what you're saying, um, which mm. is to build rapport first before mm. getting down to business, yeah. even in a yeah. very short interaction. Yeah. And uh, also like in uh, counseling, right? You don't, uh, I think, I think this def experience you will definitely have when you uh, enter counseling, you don't immediately jump into the root of the matter. You don't immediately, don't first, the first sentence open up. Okay, so what's your, so what's your problem today? <laughs> All right. I mean, if the uh, when a doctor tells you that because you know you want to get you want to feel you want to feel better as soon as possible, but counseling you need the person to feel comfortable, and I think often it begins with small talk, it begins with like uh <clears throat> like just like talk to warm up the warm up the interaction, warm up the social situation, so 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 that the person will feel more comfortable in sharing the more personal things, so. Small talk that can be about whether you know his or her day, you know what happened it what happened in the morning or what happened in the morning, and then you try to and then you'll be genuinely interested to finding out more about the person. So when you when you are interested in a person, the person there is reciprocity. The person will be more uh, open to listening to you or open to opening up to you. I believe that will be the case. So warming up the yeah it's uh, about warming up the uh, warming up the other person warming up the situation there so that people feel comfortable yeah. and that's a skill that's not easy to learn because yeah. it, it took me firstly a few years to realize it because these these are not things that is a very big focus in in school because for us in pharmacy school that's not that there's no communication of course there is but there yeah a big part of our focus is on the clinical knowledge and the technical skills required yeah. to perform our job safely. Yep. You know, the, but the other part of it is, is understanding how you can build that kind of rapport. And, and it becomes very interesting because if we are able to build this kind of trust and rapport with, with our own audiences you know, in, our, in yep. our professional world, maybe even in our personal world, it, it stands us in very good state for the future. I remember in one of our interviews, 
it was the third episode of, of Life, Love and, and Liberty Mail. I had a chat with one of my, my very good friends, uh, Raymond. He mm -hmm. is an expert in pharmacy informatics. And from the person who yeah. deals with informatics and the future, he feels that the future lies in a person's ability to build emotional connections because that's something a robot cannot do. A robot can facilitate your work, but that kind of human connection, it, it, it just yeah. doesn't happen. You know, and I remember there was also once where for one of our projects, we had to we had to buy certain kinds of insurance for the, for the event. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's, that's yep. the, the corporate kind of insurance. And I needed it very, very fast. Uh, so a robot by programming is learned to is is taught to follow certain procedures, certain patterns. Mm -hmm. But a robot will never be able to understand how urgent it is for me and give me that phone call to assure me that it's going to be okay and he's gonna take care of it. All right, by the way, Patrick Chung, that's you. Right? You're, you're the guy who did it for me. Uh, got it done for me and gave me that assurance. That's because you knew how to build the relationship and take care of your clients. All right. Uh, so, so, so kudos to you. Okay. Yeah. Jackie. Yes. Yes. All right. So today we have, well, had a nice chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's one hour already, man. Yeah. Yeah. Time really flies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we, we, we spoke about very important things, right? How, how do you gain clarity? And, and yeah. when we have good clarity, we prepare well. We are able to serve our audience a lot yeah. better, right? Really? And the other part is yeah. in, in terms of building trust and building rapport, and yeah. that has to be done in in relatively quick time at the start, yeah. right? For really? you, it's in the first two minutes of of a, yeah. a long event. For us, maybe we only have thirty seconds, yeah. But that thirty seconds is so critical for you yes. to gain the trust and the rapport of your client, and you you want to gain the trust not because you want to be manipulative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe, no, maybe. No, it could. <laughs> but really, for, for us, at least for me, I would say, yeah, you, you want to be able to do that well because yeah. I take pride in my job. Yes, and if yes. you take pride in your job, you really want the best for your patients. Yeah. And if the best for my patient is for them to share with me everything that, yeah. that they have so that I understand their condition fully, I do what it takes. Yeah. Make them okay, feel I, have, I have a wonderful way of phrasing that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to do that because you want to help them, help you, help them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You you want you want to you want to be able to help them better, and in order for that to happen, they have to help you to help them. That, right. But, yeah. That too. And, and that all comes with being able to yeah. very quickly establish rapport, uh, build their trust, and essentially capture their attention. I because right now a, yeah, yeah, a lack is a, a deficit, right? Everyone is yeah. is. I mean, you you. How much time keeps you? Can you spend on something if you're not constantly being engaged? Yeah. For sure. Really. Yeah. So I think there is a there is this quote that really that really sums up this sentiment very well it's by maya angelo it's a i think an american author and she says you know people don't remember uh, people will, won't remember what you do people won't remember uh what you say but people will never forget how you made them feel and i think that is that is a that is something that we always remember whether it's after a after a very enjoyable memorable event or whether it's after a, a an encounter with a healthcare professional that a person that you know sometimes when i read stories about people who were in uh who were in situations that weren't very pleasant they look back on it and then they always remember that they always remember this person who helped them but why they remember this person is not because this person was able to te tell them what to do or do certain things for them but i guess most of the time they were able the a lot of focus is on how like this person they felt they were able to feel that this person is very kind this person was very sincere this person was genuine and i think this is something that we want to deliver 
to the people whom we work with. Yeah. Yeah, and, and very interestingly, well, I will actually add on to that quote. I mean, they might not remember what you say, but they they remember how you how you made them made feel. Them. Right? Yeah. And, and one of the things I realized is when they feel good, they tend to remember the things that you want them to remember. Oh yeah, yeah, true. They're yeah, more receptive. They're, yeah. they're much more receptive, and there is a much greater aim to yeah. to just telling them the information. I I've I've seen my work as a pharmacist as mm. not giving you the instructions one tablet three times a day yes that's the way to, <laughs> to, to the, that's the aim right the, the, aim, yeah, the yeah. aim really is to encourage compliance yes right? and compliance right. not because i'm forcing you to do it but i want yep. you to be convinced that what we are are recommending to you be it medications be it supplements yeah. or be it really a, a piece of healthcare advice yeah what you like want mother like mother's yeah. age is for your really good <laughs> it's for your own good. It's for yeah. compliance. Yes. And all these things that we are doing really is to inspire the people that we work with mm. to be compliant uh, with something that's that's good for them. And some, mm. what is that thing that's good for them? That's what we, all of us do as, as professionals. Yeah. For Jackie, it could be taking them through an event so that they can relax, enjoy themselves, and really celebrate. Right? Yeah. And for us, is to be able to convince our patients to take charge of their health. Mm. And what I take charge of their health mean? It means to be inspired, to be confident, to be compliant, and to be really just comfortable. And you yeah. know that you're there when something doesn't go right or they can't remember. They'll call and they say, I want to find out from you. Yeah. Uh, did I miss this out? Did I forget that? And that's the kind of experience that we want to give to, to all our patients, yeah. to all our clients, yeah. to, to whichever audience that, that yeah. we are speaking to in, fact, in our day-to-day -day lives it will be very helpful as well yeah. in our day-to-day -day lives as well yeah. so really for everyone here who is listening how can you do that in in your professional work right? what is a way that you can establish trust quickly establish rapport mm. and build that kind of confidence that you have with the people that you work with, be it external clients or, or internal clients, be it your colleagues or in your personal relationships. And, and what if you were able to do that? How would things change for you? Right? And as, as we speak about this, we are coming to the end of our first part. And <laughs> it's so yeah. hard. It's just the first part. It's yeah. just the first part because now that we've spoken about about clarity, we've spoken about how we make our our audience feel comfortable. Have you ever wondered how someone like Jackie can go up and just speak as if it's the most natural, the most comfortable thing? And he always looks confident. He always looks like he knows what's happening. He knows when when you see him, it's a it's an aura. <laughs> how, does, how does he do that on a personal basis and how does he do that especially when he's on stage trying to command the attention of 500 people 1000 people All right, and that's coming up next sunday at three o'clock okay, I, I give you a, i give you a i give you a sneak peek oh. one word okay yeah one word that uh that involved that goes into the answer of that question shameless <laughs> <laughs> a nice uh, uh, of it. A, different of it. Of, <laughs> a, a different way of putting it is uh being a little bit thick skin yeah <laughs> yeah I, 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 and that that falls very nicely into a point uh which perhaps would be one way of thinking uh to move ahead from from this session all right uh, to be thick skin sometimes you got to ask yourself what would you do if you were 10 times bolder Mm. Right? And if you ask yourself what you would do if you were 10 times bolder and you actually go and do it, mm. you realize that there's so much you can achieve. Yeah. Right? And if you have never thought of how you can make small talk, well, what's one thing you want to do after this session? Right? Go ahead, give it a shot. Let us know what you think. And please follow Jackie on Facebook. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. M C Jax E M C E E J A C K S, right? Bilingual host. Go to his page, yeah. support him. He's a fantastic MC. Uh, he'll you. be great for your next event. 
And Thank you. If you want to hear more from him, he'll be back with us next Sunday at 3 o'clock live on my page, Sean Ang, as well as my new YouTube page, Pharmacy <laughs> Mastery with Sean Ang. So go ahead, yeah. go on there and subscribe. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you for your time, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.